When we think about artificial intelligence, we usually think about natural language processing or image recognition, but AI has many other less known applications. One that I'm very passionate about is replicating natural movement. I just love how some systems are able to move in a way that makes it look like they are alive. So, for the past months, I've been working on this character animation system for Unity. You see, standard animations are played completely out of the physics simulation. For example, if a character is walking and something collides with its arm, the other object may react to the collision, but the arm animation won't be modified at all. For animations to be responsive to the physical environment, we need to simulate them using what's called physical animations, also known as active fractals. This type of animation demands more processing power than standard animations and is much harder to set up. That's why it isn't very commonly used. But in the last decade, it's been rising in popularity due to the increasing potential of tools like Unity and Unreal. Games like Human Fall Flat and Gang Beasts are some famous examples. It's also been used in big blockbusters such as GTA, which uses a software called Euphoria that generates realistic animations in real time. But they use much more than just physical animations, so it's not that relevant for us. Let's get started. The first thing we need is a model. I made this one quickly. Yes, I'm obviously not a 3D modeler. After that, I made a very simple skeleton along with some quick animations. Yes, I'm not an animator either. I pulled everything into Unity and got the standard animations working. If you look at how Unity handles characters with skeletons, you can see that it creates a game object for each bone, then the animator component moves these game objects to play animations. Some bones are child to others, which means that when you move or rotate the parent, the child will follow it accordingly. If you want to move the arm, you just need to move the shoulder and the position of all its children will be automatically calculated. The process of finding how child objects move with respect to their parents is called forward kinematics. It may look simple, but it's the basis of classic robotics, and knowing it will allow us to understand a more advanced technique later in the video. Getting back to physical animations. The first thing I tried was to put the joints and physical rigid bodies directly on those animated game objects. It was a stupid idea indeed. Since the animator is forcing their positions and rotations in each frame, I can't control them with joints. Trying to physically move the animated body won't get me anywhere. Instead, I do what everyone suggests from forums and videos all over the internet. Use one body for animation, and make a duplicate that tries to match it by applying forces. Our character now contains two different bodies. The first is just a normal animated character, which plays the animation we are trying to achieve, but without any physics. The second one is a copy of the first, but instead of being animated, it's made up of rigid bodies connected by joints. It's what's usually called a ragdoll. Joints are just physical entities that link two rigid bodies together, making them rotate and move around each other in a certain way we can configure. But as it stands now, it's just that, a normal ragdoll, it does nothing but falling awkwardly. We need to bring some life into it with some movement. To do so, we'll be using a feature of joints called target rotation, which applies a torque to reach a specific rotation, as its name implies. If we could just set this target rotation to that of the animated body for each joint, we could obtain a ragdoll that would try to match our predefined animation, exactly what we're looking for. It's actually not as easy as it appears. Rotations are messy, and quaternions are evil. Making joints match the rotation of its animated peers is not writing target rotation equals animated rotation, but thanks to the advancements made in the 20th century, we've got this nice thing called the internet, and someone has already done it. So thank you, Michael Stevenson. Your efforts will be put to good use. Hopefully. By the way, I've hidden the animated model by disabling it, but doing so stops animations from being played unless you change the calling mode to always animate. Just in case someone is trying to follow this as if it was a tutorial, which it isn't. If you want an actual tutorial to know how to implement this yourself, you can find it in the description of this video. I will also put a link to the GitHub repository of this same project. In case you want to test it yourself or use it as a basis, feel free to do whatever you want with it. This is nice and everything, but it's completely useless. Yes, we have physical animations, but right now I'm fixing the hips to see it properly. This is what happens when I release it. 
and so we get into one of the most complicated subjects I've ever dived into. Balance. We need to get this thing to balance itself without falling. Not only that, we need to make it stable enough so it can walk properly using the contact between the feet and the floor. This is a concept that's been highly explored in robotics. It's absolutely fascinating and I'll be working on it for the next few months as part of my bachelor's final project. Naturally, I will not be dealing with balance in this video. There are other methods that can be used. Instead of balancing with its own movement, we can just force it to stay upright with artificial forces. Human fall flat does this very clearly. Just look at how the hips tend to stay vertical even in unbalanced situations. The more straightforward way to achieve this is by locking the rotation of the hips on the X and Z axis. That way the ragdoll literally cannot fall. Unless you know for sure this is a good fit for your application, I believe this to be an awful idea. It looks rigid and can be a source of huge glitches. The second method is using another joint. This one will connect the hips to a new rigid body, which will be upright, and the hips will try to get to that rotation through the joint's target rotation feature. This new body will be kinematic, which means it cannot be affected by external forces, so it will always be upright since the joint's torque will only affect the hips. It's given good results to me so far, but it produces a springy feeling I'm not a fan of. By the way, if you are wondering why it's always the hips, it's because it's where the body's center of mass is. The last method is applying torque to rotate the torso towards an upright direction. This is the same as what the joint of the last method does internally, so there are no apparent differences. But actually, there are. Doing it by ourselves allows us to decide how much torque is applied at any given point. The previous joint had a torque output that worked like a spring. The more you get out of balance, the more torque it delivers, just like this. But now we can choose that function, so we can change the way it delivers torque, and thus get rid of the springiness, at least to some extent. Ok, so now we can sort of play physical animations with our character. It's not perfect and it would require a lot more tuning to have something that could be used commercially. But as a prototype, it works pretty well nonetheless. But there's one more thing that we haven't done yet. What if instead of playing a predetermined animation, we wanted to generate movement dynamically depending on the context? This is best exemplified by making the character reach for an object with its hand. We cannot use an animation because the character will not always be in the same spot in relation to the object. And teleporting it, while it can look decent enough with usual animations, will look terrible combined with physical animations. We need a system that allows us to position the hand where we need it and let the body find the ideal configuration for that to happen. With forward kinematics, we could calculate a child's position given that of its parents. Now we need just the opposite. Given the child's position and rotation, find the parent's configuration that makes it possible. This can be done by a complex mathematical process called inverse kinematics. The problem is, it can be done in many ways. You can reach the same spot with your hand in infinitely different postures. To solve that uncertainty, we need what's called a hint, an object in space that tells a certain bone where to point to. This adds a constraint to the system and reduces the infinitely possible configurations to just one. In our case, we need a hint for the elbow. Once the elbow knows where to point to, our solver can solve the equations. Unity has a simple inverse kinematic system built in. It's not perfect, and I've run into some problems while using it, but it works well enough for the project's scope. This is actually the part of this project I've spent more time in. I think I might have overdone it for what I actually needed. But anyway, I learned some new things, so it's okay. And this is all I had to show you. It's not a perfect solution, and there are a million ways to improve it. But this is not a commercial project, so it makes no sense for me to spend more time polishing it. It looks cool and it has taught me a lot, so it accomplishes its objectives. I hope you enjoyed this little journey of programming physical animations in Unity. I'm very interested in natural movement generation in real time, as well as other types of artificial intelligence. I'll be talking about similar topics in this channel regularly, just in case you want to hit a certain button. See you next time!